Humanities here at Carnegie Mellon are unique because they celebrate the fact that they're non-traditional and they enable faculty and students to work across disciplinary boundaries. I came to Carnegie Mellon in 1985 and at that time it was a pioneering department in what we call the study of history from the bottom up. Our humanities uh, uh, emphasis in Dietrich is more connected to the real world than any other program I know. For my particular interests, I, I couldn't have landed in a better place. I have strong policy interests, and the college has a strong commitment to policy. Um, I, in my education and work, I've worked on history of science and technology as well as medicine. Uh, so to be at a school where I have pre-med students taking courses with me, where engineering and, and science are strongly valued, uh, is just a great environment. What is Classroom Salon? This is a, a technology that I co-invented with a professor from computer science. And it's an effort to join the pleasure of reading with a Facebook-like social environment with the assumption that a text is a better place to be at a person than a bar. And so that if you have a reader sitting along side by side with you, you'll not only get to meet interesting people, but you'll also learn more about the text. I took um, the Survey of Forms Poetry course with Joe Costanzo and then a beginning poetry workshop with Terrence Hayes. I wasn't fully aware of Terrence's reputation before I enrolled as a student, and then I was like, oh, this guy's like famous, famous. My area in African American history uh, represented uh, an, an excellent fit. And I felt comfortable about the environment and the kind of mission that the department had to broaden its focus uh, in the study of history uh, beyond the usual groups that we understood uh, into this neglected area of African American history, as well as the history of workers and women and a variety of other groups. Uh, that made Carnegie Mellon Department for me an exciting place to be. The Center for the Arts and Society is uh, unique to our institution in that it draws upon the strengths of the humanities in Dietrich College as well as the, uh, pract the practicing artists within the College of Fine Arts. The Center for Arts and Society came about uh, 15 years ago, around the time that I got here at Carnegie Mellon. And I think it was an initiative that really grew out of the hunger of a lot of us who uh, deal with arts and humanities to see our presence a little bolder and a little bigger on campus. And so we thought, well, maybe if we join forces, sort of the artists and then those of us who think about art analytically, if we join forces, maybe we can have a bigger impact on how the university sees itself. I think what makes our department unique, and I, I use that word very carefully, is that the programs that we offer at the undergraduate level are non-traditional in the sense that most universities in this country are offering language degrees that are designed really to prepare students to go into graduate study in languages. And we tailor our courses, uh, which are very content heavy, to allow students to do their own thinking and their, their own interpretation of the world around them. The English department uh, is really grounded. It's really focused on teaching students sort of deep intellectual knowledge, but also useful practical skills. The humanities department is just great for allowing students to explore any of their possible interests. I really liked the interdisciplinary approach um, the fact that it's kind of like international relations, but it's more refreshing because it takes on an anthropological focus and just focusing on cultures and languages, I'm really into that. So it just seemed like the perfect major for me. So we have a, a wonderful program now in ethics, history, and public policy, which we run jointly with the history department. And uh, the capstone project course is asking students uh, who went through the major to look historically, ethically, and public policy at the racial achievement gap in education today. I've been impressed by the, uh, the institution of new programs that have heightened the presence of the humanities uh, side of our um, academic pursuits. For example, the creation 
of the Humanities Center. The Humanities Center uh, came from some of those same hungers and drives, just to see the humanities have a bigger um, footprint here at Carnegie Mellon. We are really sort of the one-stop shopping for, uh, for the humanities faculty, graduate students, and undergraduates here. The Humanities Scholars Program is an uh, interdisciplinary um, honors program between the four humanities departments in the college. It was designed by the heads of uh, modern languages, English, philosophy, and history. Yeah, I just couldn't believe how smart and talented everybody else in the program was also. Um, and that was a big, that was one of the big things that made it so attractive as I kept going through was that I just kept meeting all of these incredible, smart writers. Carnegie Mellon is where I became serious about it, is where I developed the passion and the toolbox to be uh, a poet. And so without the training and without everything that I'd learned here, I would not have been able to make that next step into getting my MFA. And then I certainly would have had a harder time making that next step into teaching. Our philosophy department is very happy to encourage a wider range of work that's quite relevant and very practical and connected to real science and real uh, work in other disciplines. So many other philosophy departments around the country uh, are much more, um, you have to publish in only philosophy journals and only particular places. In our philosophy department, you can publish with statisticians, computer scientists, psychologists, whatever. It's a great fit for me because my colleagues are brilliant, engaging, exciting, uh, very invested in teaching. Uh, our students are equally brilliant, exciting, and engaging, and they teach us as much as we teach them. Exhilarating. Eclectic and grounded. Non-traditional. Relevant. Interdisciplinary and dynamic. We have, uh, I think, sort of unbelievable intellectual freedom here to pursue things that are really interesting to us. And I think that that allows us to stay on the cutting edge. I think the Humanities College really does stand for where the humanities are right now in the 21st century with one step in total digital technology and another step still grounded in the human experience as it is traditionally.